Northern Minnesota's history has long been intertwined with the outdoor world. And like the trusty companions they are, dogs have had a big part of it. That's certainly evident in the small recreational town of Ely. Sled dogs are a vibrant part of life today for residents and visitors alike. While you hear more about the popular sled dog races of Northern Minnesota, today we're gonna learn more about the role sled dogs play as ambassadors to the region, as well as an important part of the workforce. In 1970, the All-American Championship race was a race here in Ely. It started before the Iditarod or the Bear Grease or anything, and it was the largest race in the lower 48 states. North Star Set Sled Dog Club yeah. from mid the Minneapolis area actually who got the race started in Ely. And I, it had been running almost 10 years by the time I actually raced it the first time. And what made it the race it was because once we got the, the first bunch of teams in, we had the best trails in the United States, probably North America. So that's what the mushers want. And we want them, or the town wants them, for the business. So Ely isn't very busy in the middle of the winter. <laughs> but one guy went around and interviewed all the people in Bidger and they spent a million eight hundred thousand in Ely. Yeah, on that one, one weekend. While the All-American Championship race was a success, it mysteriously disappeared after 21 years in 1992. In 2008, the Ely Chamber of Commerce came together to establish the Wolf Track Classic sled dog race, now in its 12th year. So it had been a long, many years since a race had been run, and so we thought that we really needed to have a dog sled race in Ely again. And being that it was also proclaimed to be the dog sled capital of America by the mayor back in 1982. Racing is a ton of fun. I uh, kind of got kind of got hooked into the race and stuff last year. I did this race last year and that was my first race ever. and. Uh, now I'm kind of hooked on the race and stuff. The best part is the part we don't see here at the start. The best part is just being out in the woods and it's silent and you know, we're just traveling around and you know the wildlife just sees us as another part of the woods and you know so we get right up to moose all the time and wolves and you know we're seeing wildlife everywhere. Dog sledding is on a lot of folks bucket list at least to either watch it or we have several guide programs here in Ely. It's a big boost to the economy. Yeah, there's a number of dog sledding lodges. Um, people fly in from all over. We get people from, you know, from all over the United States and other countries that come in just for dog sledding. People as from as far away as Japan come to go dog sledding here. You can get guided trips like this and we can come out to a lake. We can go after lake trout, stream trout, walleye, northern, we can go spearing for northern. Um, you name it, the possibilities are endless. And with this dog sled team, um, you can get way back in the beaten track. I mean, we can get 16 miles up in the boundary waters, we can go up and uh, hit up Knife Lake. Possibilities are endless with the dogs. Work for the U.S. Forest Service. And in the summer times I fight fires, and then in the winter time I freight boards and latrines, fire grates and whatnot with the dog sleds into the boundary water. What we use them for in the Forest Service, you know, for what I do, you know, in my job, um, they're extremely practical because of the amount of weight that we can pull in. So, like the project that I just finished, we hauled 40 boards into a lake to replace an existing rotten boardwalk that's out on one of the portages. And, you know, I would, just an estimate, you know, I'd say that if somebody was trying to do that in a canoe, it would probably take two people, maybe two weeks, you know, three weeks, maybe a month. And with the dogs, we did it in four days. So the efficiency behind, you know, the dogs in a non-motorized area is, you know, you can't, can't replace that. All of my dogs are volunteers with the Forest Service. So they, we signed an agreement, you know, at the beginning of the dog sledding season and they are all labeled as volunteers. 
when we're running dogs in the boundary waters for the Forest Service, yeah, they're they're the volunteers, and then I, I I'm the employee. You know, we got a pretty good program. We have over well over 500 miles in freighting projects alone this year in the Boundary Waters. That's one of my favorite ways to go. You can go pretty much anywhere you want. Your sled dogs will never break down on you. <laughs> you know, they're always ready to go. And it's almost like ballet. When you watch the team and a team that's been running together, they're in complete sync. It's, it's, it's like pair bonding for wolves. Their gaits are the same, their bodies are smooth. It looks effortless, actually. But you still can't really beat a day, especially like this, running out into uh, the boundary waters around here. From racing to working and everything in between, no matter what you're doing, dogs just make everything better. <laughs>